Welcome to our virtual Sunday morning service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad you've joined us either on Facebook Live or Zoom. Let's begin our service with our opening song, The Light of God. And so now, please join me in prayer. As we turn our attention inward, feeling that light, that love, that power of the one life, that one ultimate presence that is God, that pure goodness out of which all creation is created and that lives and moves and expresses through all that is, including each of us gathered for this service this morning. I absolutely know that God is unfolding throughout our time together. We each feel that impulse of God for that greater knowingness, that greater experience and expression of its nature. And I know that every part of this service supports that intention. That we awaken to that love of God as we feel that connection that we all share in this one life. I know that we feel the vibration of love through each and every person that is of service today. I know we are uplifted by God unfolding through our music ministry, through Sam, Karen, Reverend Karen, our soloist, and Mary as she leads us in our chants. And I absolutely know that the perfect word, the perfect message of the divine is spoken this morning through Dr. Mark. That everything that he shares with us is exactly what we needed to hear today. To awaken to that goodness, that wholeness, that lovingness at the center of our being and to experience and express it more fully. And so I give thanks right in this moment for all the blessings that I know we receive during our time together. Knowing it's all God revealing itself, I say, thank you, God. And I release this word knowing it's already done. This service is blessed. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. <laughs>
Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so now, let's join in our congregational song, Surely the Presence. So now we take the opportunity to commune with that presence, that presence of God that lies in each of us. And so for the next five minutes, I invite you to just get still, to close your eyes, and to silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
Thank you so much. Beautiful, Reverend Frank. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, good morning. Thank you for being here with us in church. We are thrilled to have you with us today. Um, 
what am I talking about today? Oh, something about the lodestone of life or something like that, you know, but we always talk about the same thing. You know, Ernest Holmes used to say this. He would say, our message is very simple. God is all there is. Now, you ministers go out and find 52 different ways to say that every year. Uh, so this is, this is today's shot at God is all there is. We believe that there is a power in you, around you, and through you, and you can use it to improve the conditions, the experiences in your life, to achieve greater happiness and more success and better health and more love in your life. How can we use this power? And, there is a definite way to work with it. This is what Ernest Holmes brought us in his great revelation in founding the science of mind, that there is a definite way to work with it. Right? And so the way we work with it is we begin mentally to start to take charge of our thinking around something. You know, we can't just think what we used to think and imagine that we're going to have some new, better, different result. That's just not going to happen. So Ernest Holmes says this. He says, our three greatest needs are the need to feel wanted, needed, and loved. Well, I get that, don't you? That makes perfect sense. He says that, that we belong to the universe in which we live, right? That's our second need, to feel a sense of belonging, you know? Which, which is interesting because I really believe that as spiritual beings, this is not actually our home, but we make ourselves at home here while we're here on, on, the, on earth having this experience. So the need to feel needed, wanted, and loved, uh, to feel like we belong to the universe in which we live, and to have something, something to lavish our affection and creativity and the life force within us, to lavish that onto something that is meaningful to us. You know, so a good amount of unhappiness, I get it, comes from this sense of feeling rejected or not needed or unwanted or unloved. I do not know what your earth plane experience has been, you know, the road you've traveled. But here's what I do know spiritually for each and every one of us, and it actually, the one who said it the best to me is Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa said it like this, you must know that you are tenderly loved by God. I just think that is the most incredible, beautiful thing. If we could just sit with that and know, wow, I am tenderly loved by God. God loves each and every one of us so much. If that were not true, we would not be here, right? The reason that we are, the way we got into this club is that we were loved so much by God that God created a form for us to express in, I believe. So physical problems that we, that we deal with are probably, because, you know, I mean, this just seems to be the way it is, are probably linked to feelings of not belonging, feelings of not enough, feelings of I'm not okay. You know, everybody wants to be loved, right? Don't we? Everybody wants to feel like my love has a place to go that's valued, and we also receive that love in return. Everybody wants to enjoy being with other people. Everybody wants to um, feel the fruits of their creative expression fully expressed in the world. See, love is the giving of the self, the impartation of the self to others, because love is what you are. We say God is love. We are made in the image and likeness of God. Therefore, we are emanations of love, and that's what we give out to other people. Now, this is a reciprocal universe, and I love that core concept in our teaching, that we live in a reciprocal universe. You know, people are always saying, well, it's just not fair. It's not fair that they left me. It's not fair that I got sick. It's not fair that I'm broke. It's not fair. It's not Life is not fair. Okay, let's just get that right now. Life is not fair. Who said it was supposed to be? Don't listen to them anymore. And if you made that up, let that go. Right? Life is not fair. Life is reciprocal. What you put out comes back. That's what reciprocal means. And it doesn't always come back from where you think it's going to come back. See, the universe has this incredible mind. Think of it as a giant cosmic computer that's always trying to balance the account. Oh, Mark put some good out over here. Well, we're going to bring that good back to him over here. You don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about it coming back to us. It comes back. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. That's what it says in the Bible, right? And I think what that really means is I handle the karma. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to sell it yourself, get your hands dirty, get involved with other people, having the outcome of what you think their karma is. It's between us and God, it's between other people and God, it is not a triangulation. Us and God and other people, that's not how this works out, right? So love, love that is what we are, is the giving of ourself out to the world, right? I think that if we don't have this, this love component that life seems kind of drab, seems kind of meaningless, doesn't it? We wonder, why am I here? 
What am I doing here? God, why am I here? Have you ever asked that? I certainly have. God, why am I here? Particularly early on in life, before I found my spiritual path, the science of mind is my spiritual path, and before I found this, I really wondered what, what I was doing here because I sort of felt... Now, younger people will not remember this, but long ago, in a faraway galaxy, we used to play pinball. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, you know, in pinball, was a, it was a game they were in arcades and bars and places like that. And, you know, you, you shoot this little silver ball would go up, and, and there were these paddles at the bottom, and you kept flicking the paddles. I had a definite sense that I was like that silver ball in a pinball machine, and the paddles were just life. I did not realize, and, and the paddles were just always beating me this way or shooting me that way. I did not realize that I had everything to do with what the paddles were giving to me with what life was giving to me. Um, if you have felt in any way rejected, not enough, not lovable, not okay, and believed it, now this is a place to begin, right? Because God cannot reject God. God within you does not look at you and say, wow, I really goofed on this one. You know, no, absolutely not. God looks at you and only expresses love toward you as God expresses love toward all of God's creations. So. If we have behaviors that do not support the greatest expression of the life and love that we are, you know, it, 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 will, not, it will not go well. You know, um, to think of yourself as small or not much or lot not lovable, it's just not true. It's just not true. But, you know, our minds are incredibly powerful and we can gather evidence for whatever position we want to really anchor in. So, you know, it's not hard. If you want to prove that you are not lovable, you can gather that evidence liberally, can't you? It's pretty easy to go out there because all you have to do is have this mental mindset, this headset that, oh, today I'm not lovable. I am just not. And, and the world, because it's reciprocal, will give that back to you. But by the same token, if you know, regardless of circumstances, I am lovable because I am part of God. I am valuable because I am part of God. I have something to give, something to express, something to create because I am made in the image and likeness of God, the infinite mind. And the infinite mind is never on hold. You know, the infinite mind never hits the snooze alarm. The infinite mind is always fully in expression by means of each and every one of us. See, I think we were all born from this creative urge of life that's seeking to express itself in a fuller and greater way. The urge to live, the urge to love, the urge to create. I mean, we all feel this, right? If it doesn't happen, I think if we don't get to express that love or that creativity, then we feel frustrated, unhappy, alone, what's wrong with me, that kind of thing. But if we are unhappy, and I thought this was interesting because I hadn't come across this before, or maybe I had and I just couldn't see it. You know how you read something again and again or hear something again and again, and then you go, oh my God, that was incredible. Where did that come from? Have I not heard that before? And this is, so Ernest said that there are four adjustments that we have to make in our mental and emotional lives. And the first adjustment we have to make is to ourself. You know, we have to try and find out who I am, what I am. He says the second adjustment we have to make is to those immediately around us. So that would be like our family and our circle of close in, right? You know, am I, do I feel loved? Am I wanted? Am I needed? Am I a part? Do I feel a sense of belonging? Right? The third uh, adjustment he says we have to make mentally and emotionally is to society. Do I think that life, the world, is for me or against me? Are people trying to build me up and contribute to my life or are people trying to tear me down and destroy me, right? Can I trust people? Can I not trust people? The fourth adjustment he says we have to make is to life itself. Do I have a personal relationship with life? Does the universe I live in, does it make sense to me? Do I believe in God? Does that God love me? Can I love God in return? You know, do I have that level of faith and trust? This is what we do when we come into science of mind. We build faith. We build trust. We expand our belief so we can have a greater experience of life. To be well and happy, I think, depends on making these mental and emotional adjustments in all areas. So I want to go back to myself. Who am I? Why am I here? Am I a part of something bigger? We all have to answer this for ourselves. 
You know, and this is really important. So we don't feel like a little bit of flotsam and jetsam just floating around the universe and every little bit of wind will take us in one direction or another. So how I answer this for myself is who I am is I am part of God. I am not all that God is, but all I am is part of the great mind of God. We sing that here. Why am I here? To express a unique part of God that is within me that cannot be expressed by anyone anywhere else in life. Am I a part of something bigger? Yes, absolutely. I am part of the infinite mind of God. Now, if any of that resonates with you, I would encourage you to sit with it and think about it and drink it in. See, you belong to the universe. God wanted and needed you, else you wouldn't be here, right? So the universe, I think, the entire universe rests on the shoulders of love. That, yes, we have human parents, and we are also simultaneously, I believe, the beloved of God. This is the truth about us, that God looks at each and every one of us and just loves us. Like the father, mother, God can't help him herself from loving us. You know, he's just like, oh, I just love you. You know, like if God had hands, he'd go, oh, you're so cute, I just love you, I just love you, I would. And I really believe that, I honestly do. I think everyone has to work out a relationship with this thing called life. You know? Uh, and for me, what I remind myself every day is, yes, in fact, I live and I move and I have my being in the spirit of life, whose whole impulse is love and whose whole desire is to give to me, to you, to everyone. That's it. So think about that. The impulse of spirit is to love. And spirit only seeks to give to each and every one of us. <sighs> I think we give out love to receive it back. And yes, absolutely, it will return to us multiplied. Now, as I say that, I hear myself and I say, I don't give in order to receive because the universe is smarter than that. I give because I have an abundant consciousness. I give because I live in the overflow of God. I give because I have, because it's what I'm here to do, to give of myself and in return, because it's a reciprocal universe, God gives back to me. Life gives back to me. So love begets love. I mean, I can't make it any plainer to myself, not to you, but to myself, that when I am the consciousness of love, when there's nothing but loving thoughts in me, when nothing comes from me out to the world, goes out from me to the world, but love, wow, that's pretty amazing because love just begets more love. See, you and I, I believe we all belong to the universe, right? That this life, this life I have, you know, yeah, I think it's my life, but it's really God's life, and I belong to the universe. God has need of each and every one of us. See, and I think the more we allow ourselves to be used as a vehicle for love, for spirit's expression in the world, this makes us more confident. This makes us more self-reliant. Jesus said, as I have loved you, as I have loved you, love one another. I think people think this lovey stuff is going to make them weak. It's going to make them ineffective. It's going to make them kind of wimpy in the world. Jesus wasn't weak. He did miraculous things. He fed the multitude. He healed people. He brought people back from the dead. He resurrected himself. Does that sound like a weak person to you? Say, oh, he was so weak, he resurrected from the dead. Oh, he was so weak, he fed them all. No, of course not. This is somebody who is in touch with the principal power and presence that created the entire universe. We use the power through affirmative prayer. See, this was Ernest Holmes' great gift to the New Thought uh, body, was that he gave us a method to pray in the affirmative, where we say, yes, there are doubts, yes, there are fears, but those are not the truth. So I acknowledge, I, I acknowledge uh, that there is something that I must deny, okay? Those doubts I have, I deny them. Those fears I have, they have no power over me. And I affirm a greater spiritual truth. The truth is that I am one with God. I am one with love. I am one with health, with wholeness. We become aware of the presence of God in and around us the more we stay immersed in spiritual truth. Right? This is why 
you know, you can't just pray for a minute or two in the morning and think that that's going to have a big effect on your day. I think it's better than not praying, absolutely. It's better than not praying at all, but we want to have the consciousness of God that that presence is with us all day long everywhere we go. So I'm riding on the 405 and the presence of God is with me. How would I be if I really knew the presence of God was with me? Would I be acting like a butthead or a farm animal in my car, impatient with traffic, if I knew the presence of God was right here? I don't think I would. I really don't. If I knew the presence of God was with me when I am standing in an extraordinarily long line at Ralph's, and, and for some reason I feel like huffing and puffing under my mask is going to move things along quicker, I realize, you know, I just need to know that the presence of God is right here and everything is in perfect order. There is a divine timing to things. If I stand in this line one minute or two minutes longer, I'm just going to trust that this is where God needs me to be. Maybe I'm supposed to put a little more love into the market. Maybe I'm supposed to put a little more love to the people in front of me in line. Well, that's always the case because, you know, I have this thing about impatience. It's my special gift. <laughs> it's, in fact, you know, impatience is kind of my superpower if I had one. And, and then I get really impatient with others in front of me, whether it's on the freeway or the grocery store, the bank, the Trader Joe's walking my dog. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's, it's, it's clearly a huge lesson for me in life, this idea of like learning to surrender and just allow. See, because when I surrender and allow, I find, wow, I, I really can be patient. When we have the experience of loving another, when we love our brothers and sisters, it seems to me that that um, it's tangible, the feeling of God dwelling within me. Uh, and I think it most, it's most tangible when we're really in it, when we're really in that place of, I'm only here to love this other person. I'm only here to give them good vibes and good feelings and encouragement and support and tell them I believe in them. I believe that right there, God is dwelling within us. And that's absolutely real. So what we do as students of the science of mind is that we affirm God's perfect healing presence right here where we are right now, no matter what's going on outside. Because the truth is that healing presence that's within us has nothing to do with what's going on outside. That healing presence is operating fully, or as we used to say in the 70s and the early 80s, full tilt boogie. It's operating within us all the time. It's, you know, regardless of whether I'm conscious of it or not, but if I'm conscious of it, it has the capacity to express in an even greater way. So this morning I thought we'd do a little uh, piece of inner work together before we go into the treatment. You know, Ernest teaches us that before we can have any demonstration, we have to have both a conscious and a subjective agreement. Right? So not just the thoughts I'm thinking up here with this mind that's always going blah, 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 blah. But also, he says, our subjective is the seed of memory. Everything that's ever been said, everything we've ever said, what's been said to us, everything that's ever been done to us, everything that we've ever done. Everything in this life is stored in our subjective mind. Mm -hmm. And so I want my conscious mind and my subjective mind to be in agreement. Certainly my conscious mind says, I want to be healthy, I want to be happy, I want to have love, I want to have money, I want to have all these good things in life. But then what's going on in my subjective mind? Because my subjective mind says, oh, you want love? Well, remember the last time that didn't work out so well for you, did it? You know? Oh, money, remember the last time you had some money? You blew it, didn't you? You weren't very good with money. You know, our subjective mind so often contradicts what our conscious mind is saying. So we want to have an agreement between the two. And when there's an agreement between our conscious mind and our subjective mind, then we can have demonstration. So turn your attention in inward with me for a moment now. As we affirm God's perfect presence here and now, I believe that God, the energy that created the entire universe out of itself, is an energy of love. And love is at the center of each and every one of us. And love is at the center of each and everything. And so I invite you to join with me now and accept this healing power into your life, even if you don't believe it. Even if you don't believe in it, just on the odd chance that God is. Join with us and say, yeah, for now, for this morning, I will accept that love is the healing power in my life. And so just drink in the love of God right now. Allow it to fill your being. Allow it to illuminate every cell in your body temple. 
and highlight every good and perfect thought within. So in this awareness, I permit the love of spirit to reach out from within me to touch everyone, every person I meet. I speak this word that we are here trusting the guidance of love because we believe that it is in fact the power of God in our universe. So as I say this for myself, claim it for yourself as well, I feel love is flowing out through me to every situation, every situation I meet, to help every person I contact. And every thought I think infuses the world that we live in with more love. Love opens the door before me, makes perfect and plain and glad my way. The love of God within us right now forgives everyone and everything. This love purifies everything. It converts everything commonplace and raises it up. It makes weakness strength and turns our fear into greater faith. Love is the all-conquering power of spirit. It's the truth about us. We are one with it. It could not be any other way. And so I walk in confidence in this life. I place my trust in the love which I feel to be ever-present within, around, and through me. And within, around, and through all people. Today I place my trust in love. And I let this love emanate out from me to bless all synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, churches, all paths to God. And again, I affirm that we are blessed by being together today, that there is a healing happening spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically for each and every one of us. And we say yes to it. So with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word into God's perfect law. And so it is. Together we all say. Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
cannot be defined. No, no. <laughs> well, I can choose to be the light in someone else's darkest night. I'm so much more than meets the eye. change my life. I have the power to change my life. I have the power to change my life. Amen. Reverend Karen Mitchell, thank you so much. So you can get Reverend Karen's music at karenmitchellmusic.com to change your life. <laughs> Thank you also to our wonderful musicians, Sam Krieger, Karen Smith, and Mary Highland leading us in our chants today. So, a couple of announcements. Um, if you missed your opportunity to make a donation earlier, don't worry. We make it easy for you to do so. You can call the church right after service. We'll be here for about 30 minutes to take your donations over the phone. That's 818-762. 7566, or you can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donation page where you can make a one-time donation or set up recurring payments if you'd like. And you also have the option of texting the word give to area code 818-457-3419. And of course, we know some of you like to continue to mail in your checks. However, you find ways to support us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Over and over again, we're so grateful. Prayer with the Practitioner is available following the service on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook Live right now, just go to our website and get the Zoom link and we can connect you one-on-one -on -one with a practitioner in a breakout room so you can get prayer. And you can also send your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org or call the church number and option four allows you to leave a voicemail message and we check the messages and the emails every evening so uh, we send out an email to all of our practitioners so you'll, well, you'll be well supported in consciousness. Wednesday evening service. Meditation starts at 6.50 and the service at 7. Same links on Facebook Live and Zoom as you're using right now. And my topic that I think will just piggyback beautifully off Dr. Mark's talk of learning that we are loved by the divine is celebrate you. Come join me. I'll be celebrating me on Tuesday. <laughs> it's my birthday on Tuesday, 66. So, so I'll celebrate me and then we'll celebrate you on Wednesday. How's that? <laughs> Quick start class with Dr. Mark. So today, uh, yes, today's class two of three. Uh, so uh, class today and then again next Sunday, May 2nd, from 11.15 to 12.45 on Zoom. Become a member of our North Hollywood uh, Church and join the family. So you do need to take this class to become an official member. And this is also an opportunity to uh, get more familiar with our science of mind principles or refresh your knowledge of those principles. It's this three-part class. It's free and all are welcome. We just invite you to please register today. Today is the last uh, day that you'll be able to actually register to get credit for the class. And that can be done online at our website, nhcrs.org. Our grief support group, I know there are a lot of people that are dealing with grief on many levels right now, so we do have this wonderful group led by practitioner Carol Winokur, who really does a masterful job of leading grief support, and that's today, 1 p.m. 
on Zoom. We're offering a new class here at North Hollywood. It's called The Creative Life. It's facilitated by our very creative and just overall wonderful Reverend Sidney Lehman Steen. It's a five-week class, and it begins on Tuesday, May 4th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And it's based on the book, The Creative Life, Seven Keys to Your Inner Genius. So want to tap into that inner genius? The book is by Eric Butterworth. Join us. The cost is $100. So I know a lot of you have been asking us, when are we going to be uh, coming back together in person? We will be uh, beginning limited in-person attendance in the sanctuary. We're just excited to uh, be able to offer this once again. And that will begin on Sunday, May 16th. So that's not next Sunday, but the following. There will only be one service at 945. And of course, we will continue to broadcast on Zoom and Facebook Live. We have no intention of letting that go away at any time. So, uh, But if you'd like to be here in person, you can make your reservation online uh, starting next Sunday, May 9th. And the Wednesday evening service will continue to be offered on Zoom and Facebook Live only until further notice. Um, and before we wrap it up, I just have to say a special word of, we were saying celebrate you. Let's all cheer on uh, practitioner Liz Racy's husband, Paul Racy, who is nominated in the best performance by a supporting actor category uh, this evening. So yay, Paul. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and our Zoom virtual patio before and after our Sunday and Wednesday evening service. Uh, you can join with congregants before and after service to just continue to have that connection until we're all back together live. And uh, our men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 on Zoom. And all men are welcome. And we continue to have our morning meditation on Zoom from 8 to 8.15 a.m., Monday through Saturday. So lots going on here. Can't remember how to get to those websites. Go to nhcrs.org, and you can get the links to all the Zoom activities and Facebook Live as well. So with that, let's join together in singing the peace song. So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at, I'm at home, home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. 
I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.